Titan is the largest moon of gas giant Saturn. For a long time, the moon, which is about twice the size of our Earth's moon, has been considered the most promising candidate for extraterrestrial life within the solar system. Measurements in Titan's atmosphere were made with the Hubble Space Telescope, among other instruments. This revealed traces of gases that pointed to organic compounds. Initially, there was great disappointment when it became known after the Cassini-Huygens mission that many of the lakes on Titan probably consist not of water, but of liquid methane. But then the turbulent roller coaster ride of whether or not there can be life on Titan continued Researchers found convincing evidence that there are methane-based life forms on Titan. Find out how this exciting cosmological thriller finally turned out and what form of life NASA found on Titan in this video. Before we go any further and introduce you to Saturn's moon, we would like to invite you to subscribe to our channel and never miss a new video about exciting space missions and the latest discoveries in distant worlds. If you liked the video, we would of course also appreciate a thumbs up. Saturn's Moon Titan Saturn's Moon Titan is a fascinating world that when viewed from a distance looks like a greenish-brown version of our home planet. In fact, Titan and our Earth are the only celestial bodies discovered so far within the solar system that have stable atmospheres rich in clouds. Thanks to the latest telescopes, Scientists have been able to observe Titan better and better in recent decades. Among other things, they have discovered structures that indicate the presence of oceans and lakes. Together with the greenish appearance and the fact that this world has an atmosphere, these observations ensured that Titan became the hottest candidate for the discovery of extraterrestrial life. The Cassini-Huygens Mission In October 1997, the twin Cassini-Huygens spacecraft launched from NASA's Florida spaceport towards Saturn and Titan. While Cassini orbited and studied Saturn for almost 30 years, the lander Huygens' lifetime was calculated to be much shorter from the beginning. Huygens had only one goal, to fly through Titan's atmosphere and land on its surface. On December 25, 2005, the time had come. Huygens was separated from Cassini. Two weeks later, the lander plunged into Titan's atmosphere. Hanging from a parachute, Huygens collected data in the atmosphere for two hours and 28 minutes, after which the lander touched down on the surface and collected data for another 56 minutes. Since those memorable hours, we on Earth know much more about the true nature of Titan. And yet the mission has been far from able to resolve all the questions surrounding this fascinating moon. Titan's Atmosphere Titan's atmosphere is nitrogen-rich, just like ours on Earth, with additional large amounts of methane, hydrocarbons, and traces of organic compounds. Titan's nitrogen content is 98.4%. Oxygen is completely absent from the atmosphere of Saturn's moon. Methane is predominant in the upper layers of the atmosphere due to its low density. Remarkably, many organic compounds like ethane, propane, ethyne, and hydrogen cyanide were found. Furthermore, Huygens could detect traces of helium, carbon dioxide, and water. Although nitrogen plays a major role in the terrestrial cycles that make organic life possible, the atmospheres of Titan and our Earth thus differ significantly in the fact that no oxygen is present on Titan. What did Huygens find on Titan's surface? Huygens was the first probe to land on a moon that was not Earth's moon. The moons of the gas giants Saturn and Jupiter did not arouse the great interest of NASA or other space agencies at first. Only when it became known that Titan resembles the Earth in such a strange way did international interest increase. Since then, probes and telescopes have found numerous other moons around the gas giants that have unique surface conditions, volcanism, and traces of water. Quite unlike the gas giants, which themselves are barely composed of solid materials, the moons of these planets are rocky worlds, just like our Earth. When Huygens landed on Titan, a reddish and rugged landscape of rocks and cliffs appeared, along with evidence of coastlines. 
Measurement data from Hubble and Cassini confirm the presence of an ocean on Titan. Titan's surface is a dark brown reddish color due to deposits of organic material. The ground on which the probe touched down consists of polluted water and hydrocarbon ice, similar in consistency to wet sand or clay. Huygens was able to detect minor deposits of methane trapped in the soil shortly after landing. Either the heat and weight of the probe thawed the soil, releasing the methane, or the rising methane is part of Titan's natural gas and liquid cycles. Just as water vapor rises from the ground or bodies of water on Earth, then form clouds, and the water falls back to the ground as rain, methane cycles could exist on Titan. After analyzing the data from Huygens and Cassini, increasing evidence emerged that Titan's lakes are actually filled with liquid methane rather than liquid water. Methane is a colorless gas that occurs on Earth in the form of natural gas and biogas, among other things, and is used as an energy source. In nature, swamps and forests can produce larger amounts of methane. Man-made methane comes from rice grown in landfills and from the digestive tracts of cattle. Methane, along with carbon dioxide, nitrous oxide, and CFCs, is one of the long-lived greenhouse gases and is a major influence on the man-made greenhouse effect on Earth. Does all this speak against life on Titan after all? The disappointment was at first large. On Earth, many scientists had imagined that there could be methane-based life. But soon other voices were raised, claiming that exactly that was possible. With our very limited view of the universe with all its fantastic phenomena, how would we know for sure that there are not species somewhere whose organisms function with methane instead of water and who can breathe pure nitrogen instead of oxygen? Opponents of the theory that there must be at least primitive forms of life such as bacteria or algae on Titan sometimes like to argue that Saturn and Titan are far outside Earth's habitable zone. The planet and its moon get much less sunlight than we on Earth or Venus and Mars. But even this circumstance and the very low average temperature of minus 290 degrees Fahrenheit on Titan's surface do not necessarily argue against the development of life. Complex life forms such as fish and mollusks also occur here on Earth, far away from sunlight and heat. In the Mariana Trench, in the deep sea, six miles below the water surface, complex creatures such as mollusks and fish live that have never received even a ray of sunlight. Bacteria have been found at the poles, and a variety of fungi, lichens, and simple creatures live in caves that are freezing cold and isolated. So here too, we have to be careful when we claim that life is only made possible by light, heat, or oxygen. But what about the fact that Titan has no magnetic field of its own to speak of? Could this be a reason for the fact that there is possibly no life on Saturn's moon after all? No. Not necessarily, say some optimistic researchers. This circumstance leads to the fact that the atmosphere of the moon is exposed almost unprotected to the solar winds, in particular in the outer layers. But nevertheless, the increased values of UV and general cosmic radiation do not necessarily speak against the development of life. Again, there is enough example on the Earth, because also here there are living beings and algae that cope with extreme UV values in the best way so life under extreme conditions is definitely possible. Consequently, the researchers continued to search for traces of life on Titan and found it. Titan's Unusual Waters After the Huygens mission, it was initially clear that the 300 or so lakes that have been discovered on Titan's surface so far are most likely filled with liquid methane not water. Methane becomes liquid on the surface of the moon due to the approximately 50% higher pressure. In the south of the moon, space telescopes and the orbiter Cassini were able to discover frozen oceans. And these turned out to be an exciting new discovery, because further measurements revealed that this ocean is not made of liquid methane, but of water. Researchers even suspect that there is liquid water under a thick layer of ice, and that temperatures are around 32 degrees Fahrenheit. If this finding is confirmed, it should be virtually certain that this ocean of water contains some kind of life or a precursor such as bacteria or single-celled organisms. Plans are currently underway to send another probe to Titan. To sample water, a drill would have to pierce the thick layer of ice and lower a gauge into the depths of Titan's oceans. Plans are already underway to build such drills. German engineers are developing high-performance drills in the Arctic, among other places, 
which will be used to drill into the ice layers on Titan and Jupiter's icy moon Enceladus during upcoming space missions. Life on Titan is possible, successful simulation in the laboratory. In 2010, researchers from the University of Arizona proved in the laboratory that life on Titan is definitely possible. They perfectly simulated the conditions in the moon's gas shell in a mixture of nitrogen, methane, and carbon monoxide that exactly matched the composition of Titan's atmosphere. The scientists were able to produce amino acids even under the influence of increased radio radiation. The amino acids glycine and alanine are considered the basic building blocks of terrestrial proteins and thus the basic building blocks of organic life. In this experiment, both amino acids were produced completely without the presence of water. This proved that life is absolutely possible under the conditions that Titan has to offer. In the course of an extended experiment, all five basic components of our DNA, cytosine, adenine, thymine, guanine, and uracil, even formed under titanium conditions. What do these findings mean for us? Life on Titan is very likely possible and present. It's only a matter of time before our probes or spaceflight reaches the point where more complex research facilities can fly to moons like Titan. A probe like Huygens can only ever explore a very small section of a celestial body and return data. We don't know what Titan's lakes are like, nor do we know what lies beneath the assumed ice layers, nor can we know what lies beneath Titan's surface. It is highly conceivable that in caves below the surface, there are living beings like unicellular organisms, bacteria, or simple fungi and lichens. Furthermore, it's possible that more complex life forms once existed on Titan. The moon has been shown to have completely lost its atmosphere several times. In the case of dramatic changes of the climate, as with us on Earth with the comet impact that wiped out the dinosaurs, these life forms could have disappeared or migrated into the underground. So we can be curious about research results that will provide us with further evidence for life on Titan in the near future. To find only bacteria or fungi, there will be disappointment for all who wish to see a real alien or a human-like inhabitant of another planet or moon. These smallest living beings would be, however, a beginning, and we humans would then have to hope not to be so completely alone in the cosmos. What do you think? Would you find it important that life is found outside of the Earth? And how would this life have to look to really surprise you? Let us know and share your ideas and opinions with us in the comments.